Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism and Real Solar System. In this episode I would like to redo the moon mission, this time with more electric charge, of course. But I can't send Valentina again because of the radiation thing. Now you might be wondering how much of a Delta V impact adding the shielding would be, because we didn't have any shielding before. And so we've got zero right now. Let's pop it half, well, let's get 14,691, and then topping it off, 14,228. So full shielding kills about, what is it, uh, 470 meters per second. Half shielding will get rid of half of that, or roughly 230, 240. So, yeah, it's, it's a significant amount when you think about it. Uh, we can take a look down the line here. I mean, this, 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 and this is all getting to orbit. Then this and part of that is uh, transferring to the moon. The rest of that is uh, completing orbit around the moon. And then this is returning home. It's, I mean, taking out 400 out of that is just not an option. So... We'll, I mean, we'll we'll risk one more Kerbal. Of course, we we have the deca decontamination bay, the sick bay, um, and we could set that on the ground and deal with that. But for now, I would like to just send somebody else, Sherber, let's say, um, also technically a newbie, though I think we've sent Sherber before. Philippe would be good too. Uh, well, we'll well, okay, fine, we'll send Philippe. All right, so we'll try it again. Uh, what I've done is I've added two battery packs here and here. Oh, I have not added fuel cells because, um, as we saw from the previous episode, we can recover from a lack of electric charge. Uh, it's a lot harder to recover from a lack of fuel. Uh, so that is a consideration. Otherwise, we also have another rechargeable battery pack there so that after we decouple the service module, we'll still have a little bit more. But yeah. By my calculations, it should uh, be sufficient, uh, given that we have solar panels, obviously. But we'll have to see. So let's bring outside and go for it again. Okay, here we go. Philippe's got white hair. Probably the extra radiation wouldn't do too much damage. <laughs> anyway, uh, throttle up, SAS is on. And launch. Got that jittery flag thing. That's apparently a Copernicus scaling up thing. So, the new expansion, Breaking Ground, uh, is going to be released today. And I'll look into whether it's feasible to upgrade this install to KSP 1.7 to make use of Well, technically KSP 1.7.1 to make use of the new parts. Certainly, it'll make uh, dealing stuff on uh, doing stuff on the moon more interesting, since that's basically as far as we're going to get with the stock parts. I mean, it's possible to get to land something on Venus or get to Mars somewhat with the stock parts. We have to send probes out further as well, especially since we upgraded the antennae. So after completing this lunar mission. I'll try, I'll see about that update. See if we can do that. Obviously, a number of other mods have to be updated first, too. Okay, booster set. And they're going all over the place, but at least not hitting each other. That means that we can eventually recover them. Okay, separation. We're a little bit high, actually. We do need a lot of time, though. Okay, next stage. And this stage still won't be enough to get us to orbit, it looks like. We'll actually need part of the next stage to do that. So yeah, it's pretty tight. Okay, preparing for staging, and staging. So we need about 800 from this stage, maybe 700. Really looking at the numbers right now, I'm thinking it's a bit too tight. And I'm contemplating whether we're going to need to uh, suck some fuel in back from the lander once we rendezvous with it after the landing. 
it's possible that uh, you know the mod propellant could help or or maybe the fact that we have less food water and oxygen <laughs> Uh, might lighten things up a bit, but those don't weigh too much. Alright, I'll cut it there. Not the best situation, but uh, we'll take it for now. And why is it not recharging? Okay, we need to roll. Whoa, too much roll. Oh, did I put solar panels on the capsule? I don't think so. But, you know, as it is, the battery the batteries are already making it quite heavy. Okay, well, Macheb. Well, that's pretty good right there. Oh, right. Uh, it, well, why does it change things if I set that as a target? That doesn't make any sense. If I set the moon as a target, it shows my approach trajectory, but set the lander as a target, it doesn't. 3,227 is, strictly speaking, more than we need. I have a feeling, once again, MechJeb is ignoring the possibility of a mid-course adjustment. I mean, which by impulsive transfer would, of course. Okay, so obviously this has pretty wild inclination, but if we do a mid-course adjustment, that combination should cost less. Yes, that only costs 3,133 compared to 3,223. And now when I set a target, it actually shows the thing. Okay, 0.9 degrees. I don't think we can correct it any more than that until we get to here, but 0.9 degrees should be easy. Okay. Burn is in 10 minutes, and it's going to take... Mm, a little bit less than five minutes. We are a little bit early on the burn. Okay, and separation. Now on to the terrier. Alright, that'll be a very good intersect point. Well, that'll cut down on the gas we need, and we need every opportunity to, opportunity to do that that we can get. So let's see, in the dark, all exposed to radiation, well, there was enough power for that to pass in Earth's shadow. Doesn't seem as close, I mean, I thought we'd be... Getting that the same node at periapsis. Come on. There we go. All right. So next, we just have to make orbit. No other maneuver in moon space. You see, we have 1,667. To have a fully tight orbit around the moon, it's going to take 800. And it'll take 800 to break it. Fortunately, we're going for an equatorial situation so breaking it won't take an extra burn once we get out sometimes if you have an inclined orbit around the moon it takes an extra burn to make sure that you dip into earth's atmosphere recently I had a problem with that in our collaborative career mode in realism overhaul because we did have an inclined orbit with our lunar station but uh, yeah this should be fine but it's a little bit tight you can see uh, having uh, a Deficit of 400 meters per second would not work in this case. The water situation looks dire, but of course we only partially filled it in the first place. So that's why it's more than half done. Okay, approaching the moon. And this burn, it'll take about a minute. So I'm going to be watching the closest approach distance in MechJeb to see when to stop this burn. Okay. 
So you can see the closest approach distance going down, and once it hits a minimum, I'll stop. This is an interesting sound we've got here. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I'll use RCS to alter that again. These RCS are tuned down to 25%. Okay, well, I'll take within 200 meters for sure. Okay. So rendezvous with the lander. Let's keep uh, an eye on the electric charge during the, I mean, it's a two hour orbital period. So actually the orbital period around the moon is longer than that around the earth. Gotta watch out for that. But it would appear that all is well. I'm hoping that the relative velocity once we make our approach is less than 100 meters per second. Yeah, there's the target and it's looking good. So the relative velocity is creeping up again. Okay, the rest can be done with RCS. And we might as well have the lander point towards us. It does not have a whole lot of food, water, and oxygen, so we have to watch out for that. It has to rendezvous back up with this quickly. It should be able to with its delta V. Now we don't want this holding target, otherwise it's going to wiggle when we approach. Okay, we are on final approach here. Trying to get the solar panels lined up, but it really doesn't matter. Okay, magnetism was good. All right, well, now for it. Well, wow, we've got a lot of nitrogen drain. What happened? Oh, this has no nitrogen. Uh, that's going to be a problem. Let's just not have that pressurized. I don't know why it doesn't have nitrogen. I guess it all got depleted while it was hanging out here. Maybe. But I didn't think it was hanging out for that long. Alright, so... Transfer crew. Will it let me have that depressurized? He's not going to be in it for very long, hopefully. Okay, it's pressurizing again. What's going to happen if I undock it with it trying to pressurize here? Maybe it can fully pressurize. Let's see. No, I, it can't really. Well, let's see what happens. Time to go back in the suits. Yeah, stay in the suits, Philippe. Honestly, it's just better that way. So obviously we want to make a landing on daylight side. Um, I'll get the coordinates for... I don't know. I, I just want to land it. I don't want to try and aim for Neil Armstrong Memorial or anything like that, if it's even here. Oh boy, there's not a huge amount of electric charge in this, but it'll be enough. Okay, so we're going to use MechJeb's landing guidance just for additional information. Uh, the stage time eight minutes or so and that includes the ascent portion so it's pretty quick to land pretty quick to land okay we are intersecting the ground it says lowlands though i don't want to land at lowlands that's not interesting 
Oceanus Brasilarum was one of the possible targets. We might as well be a little bit more decisive about it. Mare Imbrium. That's nice. I like that. Mare Imbrium sounds good. Well, Earthrise. What's that dot? Venus. I suppose I should have the Suicide Burn down there. Not always the most reliable information, but... Oh, there's that fancy crater. Nope, that's a fancy, fancy crater, not the one I have been looking at over here. Hmm, this sort of looks like a more interesting region, to be honest. Maybe a little bit bumpy, though. Okay, we are now quite close to the ground. We should probably get a crew report. Transmit that. I didn't pack a whole lot of sciences on here, did I? That might be going too far in the keeping it light department. Thing to remember about the suicide burn countdown is you still have to burn off all this horizontal velocity. It's not very good about judging that, so it'll go down pretty quickly while we're doing that. I want to pitch up a little bit. The suicide burn countdown doesn't require it of me, but still very horizontal here. Okay, staging. Staging. It's of a dirty engine. It's got quite a dark puff there. Off to the side for the gas generator, I guess. I don't know why it has a gas generator. This should probably be a pressure fed engine at this point, but whatever. Details, details. Well, at this point, it is indeed looking like we can transfer some fuel into the return craft, so that's good. I'm just mainly looking at the horizontal speed for now and making sure we get rid of that as much as possible. Yep, uh, don't wiggle, don't wiggle. Okay, stop hovering, stop hovering. Okay, we have successfully landed on our baguettes. Always good. Crew report. I don't know how it's pressure. Well, I guess it was caught in the middle of pressurizing. Transmit. The information that we have in fact landed. Okay, EVA, EVA report, it's just from Mari Embrium not flying over. <laughs> we could take the surface sample from here though, uh, keep, we can just pour it and stow that. Okay, planting a flag. Leap on the moon. It's gotten bigger since the last time. Yeah, yeah, that it has. Uh, did we have anything else to do? I don't think so. Okay, we would like to uh, time our return to the return vehicle so probably have it behind us instead of ahead of us I mean I guess we could be in a catch up to it sort of thing but it's in a pretty low orbit as it is okay let's start out but anyway two eighty eight so that's um, 72? Oh, rest of England. Oh, no. The other way. 107.7. We didn't have a contract for this or anything, though. 
Uh, Philippe has 47% radiation. Oh, jeez. 24% stress, too. That's rough. Just taking a look at that closest approach distance. We have to get our apoapsis higher in order to meet up with it, obviously. Its minimum altitude is about 50 kilometers, 60 kilometers. So mainly the gap that the closest approach distance is showing is the gap in altitude. Uh, yeah, let's just do target negative relative velocity. And there we have a close approach distance forming up, and it is good. In 1 hour and 26 minutes, which should be fine. And we have an orbit. Very important to check that before relying on the closest approach distance. The IBA view shows Philippe without the helmet on, even though... Now it says pressurizing 18.27%. I don't know what it's pressurizing from, but okay. I mean, where's the nitrogen? Okay, well, uh, we do not have RCS here. We'll just get a 200 meter thing and off to the other pod, which has to... Well, it doesn't seem to have... There's no crew control. Do we have control? I mean, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, it's a dead pod right now, apparently. Oh, I... Wait. It's supposed to have communication, but I guess we're on the dark side. Uh, oh, we, 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 we will pick up communication soon, I think. Okay, well, we'll hold off until then. Then. We will be able to see it there. So, let's... Slow down a bit. Okay, now it says we have communication. And here we have communication too. All right. Well, the rest of the rendezvous can be controlled from here. Now this one had all of its nitrogen depleted as well. Now when did that happen? We've only been gone for a couple of hours. So there's something wrong with the nitrogen. It had like 700 units when we left it. But it seems like when we leave stuff alone, the nitrogen just goes away. And of course the nitrogen depletion rate is... I mean, we took the trip here and it wasn't depleting that quickly. So it isn't a nat natural depletion rate. So there's something else going on that I don't understand. Okay, we are on final approach. Let me get the rotation right. Not that, it, that it matters, we'll be decoupling pretty soon. All right, uh, wait. Well, it didn't do the weird camera change it does when we dock. It, it just docked properly. Uh, interesting. If only it always did that, that'd be great, especially for videos. Well, yeah, our nitrogen just sort of disappeared, so what can we do? Philippe is just gonna have to wear the helmet, even though it doesn't show him wearing the helmet. And it still says Philippe's inventory here in the lander can. What? It says he's there, but the inventory says he's here. Not enough crew, though, so we'll trust that he's actually there. All right, no reason to keep the fuel in the lander. Right. I think that'll do the trick. Undock. I mean, we could reuse this lander. We just have to refuel it. It doesn't take that much fuel. The problem is, uh, independently without that other stage, it doesn't uh, have enough to land on the moon and return to orbit. So whatever docks to it to give it the extra fuel, we'll probably have to start that off. It'll basically be one of those stages that we used with it this time. Okay, now this has 1,200 meters per second, which is more than the 800 we need to return. So that's good. And go. Phew. 
That's an ugly sort of situation. So people told me about Real Plume and the stock plumes and restock, and I'm not going to bother right now. <laughs> so uh, if you were wondering about that, uh, I was just focused on the mission. I wasn't going to fiddle around with mods, especially since I'm going to be looking into updating to 1.7 next. So then we'll see what the situation is. It may be a little bit of time, in which case I'll post videos with me trying out the new robotics parts while we're waiting for mods to update to 1.7.1 and for me to verify that everything is looking good. And then we will see. Losing his mind? I mean, a single, I mean, the stress definitely resets on the ground. So, a single moon mission, and he's already at 33% stress and losing his mind? Isn't that a little bit quick? We sent a Kerbal out to Eve, which was a lot longer. I mean, even if you just for the, the fact that one day is four days, four Kerbin days, um, this is only 20 days, and he's already losing his mind? So, the nitrogen thing, something's wrong. The losing the mind thing, something's wrong. Uh, the stress level is way too much. And the radiation, I'm going to say, is there's something wrong here, too. There's something that's going to be a serious hindrance. And again, I haven't tested it with the shielding yet, but uh, even without shielding. And maybe with the nitrogen, I had fixed it in the main configuration, but I never fixed it in the RSS configuration, right? Uh, I had uh, uh, diminished the nitrogen consumption by a factor of 10 in the original configuration. But then again, the nitrogen consumption on the way did not seem to be a problem. It was only when we left the vessels uncrewed that it seemed to be a problem. We need to adjust our periapsis. If we have to go around this time, it's not too bad. We've got the extra electric charge. I'm hoping not to have to break down. Well, fortunately we do have the controller on here, right? We don't need Philippe to control this. Yeah, we're just going to go with that. Buttons at random. Science data has been lost. Ah, Now that's not nice. Possessed by a blind rage, a component has been damaged. Oh, the solar panel. Well, we do have redundancy on that. Um, we need to stop, Philippe. 50% stress. And, well, at least it is the quicker part of the journey. More science. Well, I, don't, I didn't realize that we had any more science to lose. Somebody had asked to see the radiation belts on this map, but I forget what the button is, so sorry about that. Mm, start randomly pressing buttons like uh, Philippe. No, let's not do that. Well, to make it a little bit safer, we can slow down. Okay, I wanted to leave two in there just in case. And that's just the uh, decoupler. Good. Uh, turn normal and we'll get ready for decoupling okay there we go we all good um, battery power is topped off there and there so separation separation okay surface zero And we'll arm that. Well, there will be G-forces. Ablator is ablating. Around three and a half Gs right now. And it looks like we're gonna be coming straight down. The ablator seems to be holding out pretty well.
Yeah, we're coming straight down. G-forces seem to be moderating at this point, so it wasn't too bad. Though, there's another point where it uh, finally dips down to about 40 kilometers and that might cause a G-force spike. I mean, I would say that the fact that Philippe had to do stuff in an unpressurized environment might have caused the extra stress. That might have been a thing, which means that the root cause was the lack of nitrogen. We'll have to look into that. Maybe that's why. Stress seemed to be alleviating. Uh, I guess every time he broke something, he reduced stress, because I thought it was beyond 60%. This has been a pretty constant 3Gs for a while. Okay, yeah, getting closer to 6Gs, but not in dangerous territory. This is all good. 6.1Gs was the max. So yeah, 54% radiation here. Okay, the full deployment gets us to... 6 meters per second, which is fine. I don't know if there's any science left, but... I'm just happy to get him back home safely. Okay, recover vessel. So, there we have it. Moon mission successful-ish with quirks. I certainly learned a few things about uh, Kerbalism in RSS thanks to this. Yep, yep, definitely interesting. We did get some science out of it. I think those were... No, I mean, th those must have been recovered. Yeah, we, uh, aside from what we transmitted. And 11 experience gained, but we're going to have to detoxify people. We're going to have to use that sick bay, uh, sick bay part. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll see what comes next. First, I'll try updating, and I'll, I'll look into the new parts that the expansion introduced. And I want to see how to use those effectively. So I might take some time before the next video in this series. But we'll see. Anyway. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.